Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see my interview with Jürgen Leijers aka DJ Fire about the Fire and Ice classic Never Ending Melody. But before we start with the interview, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and very important, also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. Alright, here it is. The story behind Never Ending Melody by Fire and Ice, my interview with Jürgen Leijers aka DJ Fire. Enjoy! Fire and Ice is a project from Belgium based duo Jürgen Leijers aka DJ Fire and Laurent Veronet aka Airwave. In my previous interview with Jürgen, we already spoke about the Fire and Ice debut track Lost Emotions. But for this week's vlog, I did ask him about the story behind Never Ending Melody, a beautiful trance track which came out in the year 1999. My first question to Jürgen was, if they were inspired by something when they started to work on Never Ending Melody. Like with most uh, Fire and Ice tracks, uh, usually we listen to a lot of uh, productions made in the, in, the, in the period we produced the track. And we compare things we like in the tracks and then we try to make it our our own like using elements and using builds and using uh, structures. Uh, Laurent has a good a good ear. He plays like a new melody. He asks me, do you like it? What do you want to change about it? And that way we create something new and with never ending melody, I think uh, Ferry's productions were the inspiration. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, there's some slight similar similarities as uh, yeah. Gu Guriella. Yeah. yeah, true, Guriella, and I think uh, maybe another one, but I'm not sure which one it was. Uh, another Dutch production. Not sure about that anymore, but yeah, yeah. Especially the Ferry Corsten productions. So did you guys usually okay. start like with the melody first? Um, yeah, yeah. Usually it was like the lead melody, change some things about it, and then build a build a track from uh, from the start build to the, the melody to the break and then uh, yeah go on from there but usually it was uh, a basic idea the melody in the break yeah 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 um yeah so what else can you tell us about uh, the production process from the track um back then i think uh laurent was using a lot of logic back then i think logic 4 i he used ableton live later on but back then it was logic 4 a lot of MIDI, not a lot of uh, audio yet. Qua, I think uh, keyboards it was pretty much the same as in the beginning. Uh, still the Axis Virus, which was really big among trans producers. All the big names used that for uh, for their trans productions, like uh, like Mike and like uh, yeah, like Armin. They all yeah. always always used the Axis Virus. Mm -hmm. um, maybe some cork, uh, all the cork material as well. Uh, Still uh, a lot of yeah, Roland keyboards. Yeah, they were really, really used by everyone, and they still had a lot of good, good sounds that were really suitable for the trans production. So, uh, was this also made in Laurent Studio, or was this already in the Bullseye Studio? Um, let's think. I think it was in the the Iceberg Studio at. Uh, the old, uh, the old bonsai address. Yeah, we had uh, the old record store back then uh, in Deurne, with a studio of Mike in the basement, and then there was a big studio in the back, and this was used by Santini first, I think Santini with uh, Greg the Wind, and later on it was uh, Laurent Studio, yeah, the Iceberg, and it was a really. Uh, it was an old vault because it used to be a bank. Oh, that's cool. It was a bank uh, and when the bank was, was gone, it was the bonsai uh, shop with the bonsai studios. And the place where Laurent studio was, was a vault. So it was really good, uh, isolated. Uh, we could really pump the music loud and nobody, nobody uh, heard anything yeah. about it. So, uh, uh, that's cool. So uh, I'm going to take you guys to finish this track. Um, maybe a bit longer because we usually uh, took a day to make a track and then we were listening to it um, that's not good, that's not good and then we came back another day to start uh, mastering the track, uh, changing a few details here and there, uh, sometimes test it in a club as well of course and then uh, 
come back and still change a bit bit of things. But usually it was a couple of days, yeah. no longer than that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, who came up with the title of the track? Is there a story be- behind the title? Um, not really, I think, because usually I came up with the titles, but I'm I'm pretty sure it was Laurent who came up with Never Ending Melody. Uh, maybe because it's stuck in your head. I think it was something like that. The melody sticks in your head and then you keep on thinking about it and that's why it's a never ending yeah. melody. Something yeah. like that. That's yeah. a good title. Yeah. But yeah, the, the track is called Never Ending Melody. So so why does it end after nine minutes and five seconds? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one, yeah. Yeah. Every track has to end sometime. Yeah. So uh that's true, that's true. Um, yeah, we can find Never Ending Melody on the Chesto Mix compilation Magic 5. Uh, yeah. Do you remember finding out that he was going to put the track on that CD? Um, the record company told us, because usually they were contacted by uh, the other record companies uh, yeah, to use tracks yeah. on compilations. And uh, I knew Tiesto was playing a lot of our material because he also uh, yeah, played the first, the couple of first ones. Uh, he, he used uh, The Out of Darkness, uh, which was a B-side, I think, of, of a track. Um, on his uh, mix compilation for IDNT back then, yeah, Inner City, Inner City, and I, he used uh, my first productions like the Energy Energy Source project on his um, Magic uh, series. Yeah. So yeah, Tiesto was a big supporter of our uh, yeah. of our Fire and Ice. Uh, yeah, actually, like like Silent Cry. That's also like on, on Magic Six. Yeah, um, true. Yeah. So yeah, th- yeah. He, he he was like a huge supporter of your stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Really happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess that gave the sales a huge boost as well. Yeah. And it, uh, it yeah, it, it pushed our name in the in the other countries as well because, yeah, otherwise we might have been big in Belgium and Holland, but guys like Tiesto and Armin they pushed our material worldwide and, yeah, yeah. It's still funny to see how back then without. YouTube without Facebook, without Instagram, a lot of people knew our name back to South America, yeah. to Australia. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this was a bit like in the start of the internet. And I know, that, I remember it was like internet forums, but yeah, no yeah. so social media. So no, no, no. Yeah, yeah no, it's a different time. So yeah, uh, you and Lil Hall started the Fire Ice project 25 years ago. And, yeah. and there have been plenty of great releases from you guys during the years. Uh, but I was wondering which of the Fire and Ice tracks is your own personal favorite? Um, my own personal favorite, I think, is Silent Cry because it's a really emotional break. And uh, listening to it really takes me back to that time. Yeah, yeah. And takes me back to, yeah, might be a bis- bit nostalgic, but uh, the, 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 high, the high days of, of trance and the clubs in mm-hmm. Belgium and Holland. Yeah. Fortunately enough, there's not that much anymore yeah you have the festivals but the, the club scene is not really the same anymore yeah that yeah um but i guess also the fire and ice track out of darkness is also extra special for you yeah yeah it's true um that one was made i think in 98 um also with an idea about a build uh, because we were uh, listening to a lot of the belgian uh, tracks that were doing really good in the clubs and we had this track i think uh, was it Fiocco, Fiocco, uh, 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 Lito, yeah. yeah. But um, we weren't going to use the uh, the breakdown in the in the melody. So we had like the, the kick is good. We're going to use the kick, and we're going to build from that. And actually, it's starting out as a techno track with a lot of techno sounds in it. And uh, then you go to the break, and then the break changes into something really transy. And yeah. Tiesto played it on his uh, on his inner city, and uh, it became pretty big back then. And then years, years and years, there's nothing, and then suddenly it was it was back again. Really yeah. strange. So uh, uh, NATO used it for for the let's see, uh, out of yeah. darkness from Fire and Ice was chosen for the NATO 65th uh, anniversary True. video. Yeah, how cool was that? <laughs> I think we were in the studio uh, studio working on another track, a couple of years later. And suddenly uh, we got this this message or mail from uh, from the record company and saying uh, NATO wants to use uh, Out of Darkness. We were looking at each other. NATO, do you know a record company? NATO, no. Nope. Do you name maybe an artist? No. Nope. What's NATO? What is that? So we weren't thinking thinking of NATO at all as as being yeah yeah the NATO everybody everybody knows because they don't have anything to do with music. But then yeah. 
They used the track, of course, they edited it for their movie, but they used the track for their yeah. 65th anniversary, yeah. so that was pretty cool. So I guess it was a big trans fan at that made yeah. I think so, yeah. Someone must have known Fire and Ice and must have said, and we want to use that track yeah. for uh, for our movie. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, of course. Um, are there still Fire and Ice tracks you guys made back in the day that are unfinished or maybe still are finished but never got released so far? Um, I'm thinking maybe there's one or two we used to. I'm, I think we, we made them for the Project Energy because we had the Project Energy after uh, Fire and Ice and during as well. And we only made two, I think, but there was a third and a fourth we were working on and was almost finished, but yeah. Yeah. Don't know why, but it was never released. I think it. I think I even tested it in a few clubs and it worked, but it wasn't released. Huh. So, you know, maybe 2024, <laughs> like like rework. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Besides your releases as DJ Fire and Fire Ice, yeah, you've also been involved with other projects. Uh, for example, Energy Source, uh, Freebase, Power Station, and you did two tracks as Indie Mode together with Mike. Yeah. So, are there any new collabs in the works? Um, I've talked to a couple of producers and who knows, maybe next year, because they all have a busy schedule, they have their own projects and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I can't tell you too much about it yet, but there might be some collapse yeah. coming up. Uh, yeah. So do you have any idea how many tracks or remixes you have been involved with during the years? Ooh, that, mm, a lot. Uh, if I count all the remixes as uh, Fire and Ice, and then there's a couple of DJ Fire remixes. There's all the projects, 40, 50 maybe, I'm not yeah. sure, yeah. something like that. And then there's sometimes a vinyl with four tracks. So yeah, times four. Yeah. <laughs> so a yeah. lot. I, I, I know this is probably gonna be impossible to answer, but but what do you consider to be your, fit, your best track ever under any kind of alias? Um, for me personally, I think, uh, the Silent Cry from Fire and Ice is really cool, and the Para Siempre also because of the guitar Laurent used. Uh, it was a live live guitar. Oh, really? Guitar. Live in the studio. Yeah, wasn't the sample or uh, or a keyboard. That's uh, that's really cool because it's really uh, emotional as well. Yeah. Para Siempre. So I think uh, it's that it's that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're also active as a DJ under the name DJ Fire. Uh, yeah. well, I think you started as a DJ Energy. True. Can yeah. you tell a bit more about the start of your uh, DJ career? Uh, I started out in 92, I guess, 91, 92, I started playing at school parties. That was a combination of uh, commercial music, a bit poppy music with uh, the house and the techno tracks uh, from back then. Um, then I got together with DJ Ghost, who is really, uh, really famous uh, now. And we got asked to play in a, a small club in uh, Brasgaat in Belgium called The Q. Uh, it was known as Confettis before that. Yeah. Um, yeah, also a pretty big name because of the, the group, the Confettis, which came out of the club. Um, and we started there playing, uh, I think, 93 somewhere. And that was pretty much the start of my career as a DJ. Also, uh, uh, house radio station, which was ex exclusively house music. They didn't play any commercial music. And we had a show together there uh, each week. And... Uh, that yeah, started from there. Bookings in smaller clubs, then bigger clubs, then festivals, then, then thanks to the musical projects and uh, the record company, I also got to play abroad. So, uh, yeah, it, really, it pretty much went naturally from there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Belgium is very famous for all its legendary clubs. Uh, can you mention some of the clubs you did play for? Um, pretty much every club, I think, uh, from the more commercial clubs to the, the big underground clubs like Extreme. I played as a guest at uh, Zillion, Illusion, La Roca, uh, yeah, too much to mention, yeah, actually. Yeah. Uh, same for Holland. I played a lot of Holland uh, clubs in Holland, uh, some festivals like Mysteryland, uh, uh, yeah, I have a whole list. Yeah, it's somewhere, somewhere <laughs> in the archives. In the archives, yeah. Yeah, you also, yeah, you just mentioned it. You did also play at parties and in clubs in the Netherlands, but also in Norway, Finland, Malta, Scotland, Germany. Yeah. Uh, a few that are worth mentioning are for sure the Love Parade. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tomorrowland in your home country, Belgium, and the Summer Parade in Oslo, Norway. Yeah. Um, are still parties or events you would love to play for? Um, yeah, I, I'm still looking for some bookings at the Pizza. Oh yeah, because I've never, oh, never played at Ibiza. I've oh. been there, but I've never played there. Yeah. But back then it was like I think uh, 
all the big uh, organizations were or from Spain or from Germany. So it was, yeah, and in no, UK, of course. Yeah, so pretty much all the big, uh, yeah, clubs and the big um, concepts that were in Ibiza were from UK or from German organizations. Yeah. So, so they were like focusing more on those kind of sounds, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what is the craziest or weirdest thing that did ever happen uh, at a gig? At a gig? Too many to mention. <laughs> I think there's um, an example when I was playing an extreme uh, Belgian club and you have this uh, card you can use for drinks. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a guy walking around and he asked me what I wanted to drink, but I had, a, had to hand over the card to him. So he took the card with him. He wrote down what I wanted to drink. He came back and he threw the card over the over the, the, the edge mm -hmm. and it landed right in front of my vinyl and my needle started skipping oh. and the club was like full with people and everybody was looking like what's happening here and that was the tum, 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 yeah. like that all the time and yeah it's it's not funny when yeah. you're playing for a full club so and there's some other stories as well but that was one that came to, yeah. that came to mind so yeah and, and lost records like for example you're at, you're at a, an event and then your records are still at the airport oh yeah yeah yeah. we uh we also had that one uh, in scotland i played at a gig in uh, the north of the uk and there was this um this guy that booked us he booked us for a flight in the morning we flew over and we landed and we were waiting at the belt and nothing came so we were like where are our records and yeah the guy from the club was already there so he was like no worries, uh, we'll just ask when the next flight is. So we were like, yeah, maybe tomorrow or the next day. So we didn't have time for that. And luckily there was a second flight from Brussels to uh, to Edinburgh and they uh, had our suitcase with the vinyls. So, so you could still play. Yeah, we had them a couple of hours before we had to start. Yeah. So it was a, a close call. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I guess that's pretty stressful. Yeah, 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 for sure. I had the same story uh, pretty much with uh, Laurent in Norway. We were at the gates and then suddenly they were calling uh, Mr. Leijers and Mr. Verone um, uh, immediately asked at gate 24. We were like relaxed at gate 20 because that was the original gate. We were looking like, is that us? Oh no. So I had to run through the whole airport to get a, a yeah, yeah. A pretty pretty close as well to get the airplane. But yeah, you made it out. So you made yeah. it. Oh yeah. Um, uh, what can people expect when they go to see a, a gig of you? Uh, depends because uh, in Belgium and also in Holland, I got uh, asked for a lot of classics parties. So the the big sounds from the 90s, the the early bonsai sounds, the trance sounds of the the parties back then. Nowadays, I try to focus on more music and more um, how should, should I say it, uh, the newer music, yeah, the 2023 styles. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Although it's pretty difficult to get uh, in between all the new names uh, because yeah, people know them for their productions they made now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's time to make a, a big new one. Yeah, yeah. And that way they they book you for the new music. Yeah, yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah. So wh where do you see yourself in 10 years from now? 10 years from now? Um, I think somewhere uh, at a yeah, uh, quiet place, relaxed. I'm not sure I'm, we'll be making music back then. Yeah, uh, not sure about that. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. Well, thanks all for your time and good luck with everything. Thank you. All right, that was it. This week's vlog, the story behind the Fire and Ice classic, Never Ending Melody, my interview with Jürgen Leijers, aka DJ Fire. Jürgen, thanks a lot for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like. Leave a comment in the comment section below. And very important, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. And in case you missed it, I did another interview with Jürgen. That one is online already. And that one he shares the story behind the Fire and Ice track Lost Emotions. And I did another interview with him. And in that one he will tell the story behind Forever Young. Another big classic by Fire and Ice. That interview will be online in a couple of weeks from now, so stay tuned. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time, bye bye.